Hi everyone. Um, welcome back. I am here to finish up my second part of the series um, weight awareness and I'm going to be specifically talking about the high school timeline and beyond. Um, you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm really tired today and my kids were sick last night and I'm just exhausted but I wanted to get a video out before too long so I thought I'd take advantage of this time off and send something your way. Um, if you don't remember the first section, um, look down below in the information section and I'll link to the, uh, the first video in the series. Basically that was talking about um, from birth until about 8th grade and, and when weight became somewhat um, of an issue for me and I ended up eighth grade and chubby basically so if you want the cliff notes that's where we're at um, beyond eighth grade uh, I'll never forget the summer of um, between eighth and ninth grade I was going to high school and I was going to a high school where hardly nobody knew me um, most of my friends the where we lived there they lived in a different part of, a di of our school district. So they ended up going to one high school and I went, ended up going to a high school across town. And I literally knew almost uh, maybe two people, nobody. Um, and I specifically remember that I could reinvent myself. And this was a very exciting prospect to me. That I could reinvent myself and um, it wasn't my goal to be popular, but it was definitely my goal to be desirable to boys. And um, I wanted to be more accepted than I had been in my junior high days, you know, from being called names about my weight and all that good stuff. So I lost a significant amount of weight between 8th and ninth grade. And I'll never forget going into high school in the most skin tight dress that I could find. I wish I still had it. But I was a very um, tiny size. I probably, I, I would say that I went down from about 140 and I went probably down to about a hundred pounds so I was really thin and I'm only five foot three so it didn't look too too thin but uh, it was getting there and it was this uh, one piece dress and the dress was completely form-fitting and it was white with black flowers on it I'll never forget and it caught way too much attention and not the right kind of attention either I'll tell you that but after I, I was a little bit embarrassed I felt like it was a little bit too much so the days after the first day of school I, I toned it down a bit but I did um, tend to wear form-fitting clothes and I liked the attention that I got from boys and that's when I realized that having a smaller weight and showing that off was going to be in my favor because I had no problem by by that point getting the attention of boys and having boyfriends. I don't think that I went without a boyfriend ever from high school on. Um, and I, uh, I fell in love very early in my life. So um, I, I, once I had a boyfriend, usually they're around for quite some time and, and I ended up marrying one of them. So uh, yeah, the, the, the small dresses served me quite well. and. The way that I did that was I um, I was not healthy at all. I hated exercising, but it was a lot easier for me to cut out food. And my freshman year, my diet consisted of, and this was every day, nearly every day that I went to school, my diet consisted of I'd walk to school and I would get a Pepsi in the morning at 7-Eleven. I would have um, nothing until lunch. I may or may not eat a bag of chips and a soda. And then when I would walk home from school, I would stop by Del Taco and I would get the child size, the little small size bean burrito. And that was it. That was all I ate all throughout the day. If I was especially hungry and um, embarrassed because my stomach was growling, I may consume a little bit more, but it was extremely small amount. And I didn't exercise except for when I was forced to in PE, and even that was still, you know, 50-50 whether or not I did. Um, and I maintained a small weight in high school, essentially starving myself. Um, 
there was a lot of that. And it wasn't until probably, I would say, my senior year that I started to gain a little bit of weight and feel a little bit more comfortable with eating and, and knowing that I wasn't going to blow up. And um, and I tried to exercise and, and I tried out for track and all these things that didn't stick. Um, I just didn't like to sweat. I didn't like to be hot. I didn't like to exercise. There was no euphoria for me that came out of it. Um, if I were to try out for something or if I did want to do something physical, it was usually to get the attention of a boy. So um, it was not anything that I ever stuck with. Now beyond high school, I decided that it was time to get on birth control and this was where everything went to hell. Um, I got a depo Provera shot when I was 19 and that shot literally within, I had two injections and they tell you that weight gain, like any birth control, is um, a side effect to the birth control. The thing that they don't tell you is that there are certain people who have severe reaction to it and I was one of them. Um, I gained 60 pounds in the course of six month period of time and never was able to get down to a normal weight after that. After that, it was just downhill. Um, I got to the 200s by the time I was in my early 20s and pretty much have set spent my time in the twos for the exception of a few times that I had lost some weight here and there in adulthood. Um, I found myself socializing a lot with food, getting accepted with food, making people happy with food, and what I mean by that is I got a lot of joy out of being the hostess for Thanksgiving or um, making a really horribly good and horribly bad for you hors d'oeuvre. Um, I liked cooking for my husband. I liked uh, going out to restaurants because let's face it, restaurants you don't have to clean, you don't have to cook, their food usually tastes better, and you can focus on the person that you're with. So restaurants to me, whether it was with family or friends or um, my husband, it was, it was always the perfect setting for me. I love eating out. And it wasn't just fast food, although I did eat fast food a whole lot in my earlier 20s, but as I got older, I preferred restaurant food and I could afford it, so I figured why not. During this time, I also found out that I had a medical condition called PCOS and that is called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, I'd known from a very early age that I had problems with my, um, with my ability to uh, be fertile and have children and um, after I got off the Depo Provera and before I got on the Depo Provera I didn't spend any time on birth control. I mean I, by all accounts I should have been pregnant at a very early age and thank God I wasn't but I could have been. Um, but the the polycystic ovarian syndrome the one of the side effects to that is that it's extremely hard to lose weight for women. Um, your hormones are so imbalanced by this particular issue that it um, it makes it extremely hard to lose weight. So in my weight loss um, attempts, a lot of those attempts, while they were made uh, successful in the beginning, would often not stick. Or it would be harder for me to lose weight than the average person doing the same effort, um, simply because of not only just body chemistry, but because I had this condition. So um, I was fighting an uphill battle from very early on and uh, I haven't been able to win that battle. As my years went on, I also developed, um, the only way I could describe it is a food addiction. I was embarrassed by my weight, I was ashamed of it, and I started adopting behaviors that were a per like an addict, essentially. Um, I was eating in hiding. I was, I, I would literally wait for my husband to leave for school. And I would make myself an entire box of macaroni and cheese. And I would eat the whole thing as one meal. And this was not uncommon. But I would only do it while he was gone. And, um, I would, I was working, um, 
and my drive wasn't very far, so I had a lot of time usually between the time I left the house until um, I had to open up where I was working. And um, it was an office where I was the only person in the office a lot of the time. So I would get, uh, I don't like breakfast food, that's the thing. So I would go to Burger King and I would get a Whopper for breakfast. And then I'd have something else similar for lunch. And then there's a very good possibility that I'd do the same thing for dinner. Um, so my early 20s, I was horrible to my body. And I was horrible as an eater. And I, I became obsessed over food. Uh, once I wanted something, it would stay in me and become an obsession until I satisfied that need, that desire. And satiety to me was not feeling um, satisfied. Satiety to me meant being full, being unable to eat another bite. So I would eat until I was re literally ready to explode. And that to me was my normal. And my addictive behaviors would continue on to come in. Um, it's very much like a pregnant woman who has cravings. Um, I would crave one thing for a period of time and I would eat myself sick of that item. And then I would move on to the next thing. Um, for a while, it was jack-in-the-box jalapeno poppers. I couldn't eat enough of them. And whenever I could stop, I would. Um, I, for a while, had a complete and total addiction to the Nestle Toll House cookie sa uh, ice cream sandwiches. Those are hundreds of calories, and I would eat one like it was nothing after an entire meal. So I would get into these obsessions over these particular foods that were really awful for me, and it could even be a salad. Um, I really had a thing for... Um, this one particular salad at California Pizza Kitchen, and if you look at the calories, that salad alone is a day's worth of calories nearly. And um, I would, I would literally f just obsess over it until I had it. And there was no squelching that obsession until I consumed what it was that I wanted. And it was a battle for me because this is something I've hidden. This is not something I've ever shared with people. This is not something that um, I told anybody I was battling with. And when I did, it was a way, in a way that I couldn't explain how I couldn't stop that need, that feeling, until I had that food. And that's when I realized that I really had a, an addiction and an addictive problem. And... Um, no matter how many times I tried to lose weight, that needed to be addressed and it wasn't getting addressed. Um, it wasn't until after the kids were born in 2009 that I realized that I had something that psychologically needed to be addressed. And I, I did, I um, sought counseling and it wasn't, um, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it wasn't working, but there were so many other things going on at that time in my life that it wasn't the focus of my efforts. Um, luckily, I had been able to lose weight after the kids were born, but it didn't stay off. Much of it was a stress diet, and, um, and it quickly came back as I uh, became more um, managed in my life and more calm in my life. Food seemed to be a, a celebration, um, and I, I kind of reveled in that for a little bit, um, which brings me to today. And uh, I have a friend on a blog, and she goes by Posey, and I'm not going to tell you the blog because it's none of your damn business, but um, I don't want to give her away if she doesn't want to be given away. Anyway, Posey, you know who you are, and I adore you, by the way. Um, she asked me, uh, she said, I'm assuming that the decision to have the surgery came after failed attempts to lose weight in other ways. And I was wondering if you're going to speak more about that, what you think went wrong and whatnot. And I think that that's really interesting and probably part of the key. I think that part, some of it was a psychological issue that I have with food. I still have it today, um, and I'm still addressing that. And I don't know if that will ever go away. I don't know if, the, if this type of addiction can go away or, or any really, but 
think of it this way. If you're on crack and you need to get off crack, you are told stop doing crack. Great. Get off crack. Now, if you if your addiction is food, there's a huge problem because you have to have food to sustain life. And without it, you'll die. Um, so you have to have a certain amount of food. And, you can, and you're, you're basically telling a crack user, you, you have to have your crack to live, but you can only have a little bit of it. And when you are an addict to, to food, just like any other substance, there's no um, controlling that sometimes. And it's very, di I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm saying it's extremely difficult. And um, part of the reason why I chose to do the surgery is because it physically allows me to control the volume of food that I can eat um, while I continue to address my addictive behavior with that comes with food. Uh, I, I don't think that I would be successful if I only did one or the other. And in terms of the things that I've tried, I, I'm the girl that, like you've heard, I'm sure a lot of people say, I've tried it all. Um, Weight Watchers multiple times, Jenny Craig, uh, the Atkins diet, South Beach diet, um, Fen Fen when it was popular and, and legal. Um, I tried, um, oh gosh, what else? just a lot of diets. I mean, Richard Simmons I did even when I started gaining weight before the Jeff Provera. Um, deal a meal. I, I did deal a meal. So, um, I did stop the insanity, if you remember that. Uh, if you're, <laughs> if you're old enough to remember that. Um, I have done like cottage cheese diets. I have even done a, um, an all liquid diet, which was mo which was monitored by a physician, it was called OptiFast, and OptiFast is the diet that Oprah lost tons of weight in the 80s or 90s. I forget when. I think it was the 90s, early 90s. She lost a ton of weight, and it's because you get 800 calories, and it's only liquid. Um, and I was really successful at this diet, let me tell you, because when you take food away from me completely, I'm golden. I can go without food. It's the moderation that I lose my control. So, um, so OptiFast was actually very successful for me. I lost like, I want to say 65 pounds, um, in 2006 and I looked good and I was starting to feel good and I was getting down to a normal sized weight and, um, I was afraid to get off of it because I knew that once I had a little bit of food, what was I going to do? And they don't, the program didn't really address that as much as they probably should. Um, they don't address the psychological um, aspect of having to be on a essentially starvation diet and coming off of it. So when we were eased back into food, once I decided to take that plunge, it wasn't very long until I gained weight. And I actually did OptiFast three times. Um, the second and third attempts were not as successful simply because the second attempt... Um, I lost funding for it. It's very expensive. And the third attempt, I got pregnant. So, um, yeah, I, I think that multiple things went wrong. And, and I think that the one component that is there with all of them is the behavioral part of it, the psyche, you know, not having that changed. So, um, as I am now medicated in terms of my um, depressed depression issues a lot of heavy people do have depression um, now that that's a little bit better controlled sorry I thought I saw something at my window uh, now that that's better controlled and um, and I've got counseling available to me to address my food issues specifically, I think that the combination of those two things are going to help me be more successful um, in this endeavor. So um, this was a much longer video than I had expected, but um, I think that the adult years is when I really came in tune with what is it that's going wrong and um, what do I need to do to, to fix it. And that's why I'm really excited about the 
possibility of a surgery and, and being able to get that because, um, you know, once you can maintain your weight for a certain amount of time, um, it's easier to continue on with that behavior, but it has to be for a longer period of time. In one of my classes, my nutrition classes, we are met with a psychologist and um, he's actually an addiction specialist. And in that class, he talks about specifically that um, your brain is um, has its own train of thought in terms of food. And it, it, it wants and expects the food that it's been getting all this time. And so when you are depriving it of it by dieting or changing the way that you're eating, um, it continues to crave it and it continues to still desire it. And it's not just your body craving it, but your brain and the serotonin and the chemicals that are going on. Your, your, your head is dependent on the food. Um, once you maintain a healthy weight for about a year, those uh, desires, they start to change. And also the, the surgery changes your, the chemical reaction to food as well a little bit because of the way that everything is rerouted with gastric bypass. So um, that, that does change your reaction to food a little bit. But there is a, a period of time where after surgery you go through a mourning because your brain is catching up with what your body's doing. And I think that that for me is what I need. I need my, my uh, brain and my body to be on the same page and I need them to do it both um, intellectually and chemically. And uh, this is what gastric bypass is hopefully going to um, afford to give to me. Uh, I think that I'll go ahead and stop there. Um, future videos. I'm still looking for suggestions. If you have anything specific, let me know. Otherwise, I'll continue on with my um, experience. I should be going in on April 24th to see my surgeon and then hopefully get insurance approval two to four weeks thereafter. So uh, the videos will be a little slow coming um, in the next couple of weeks, but I'll try to keep a little something out there as I go along and uh, hopefully keep everybody in tune. So Again, if you need to do or want to see any of the other blogs, subscribe to my channel. And if you need to see the first part of this second part of this particular video, I'll link it below. Thanks so much for watching. Talk soon.